Welcome back guys to another video here uh, from Lagos and I got a very very important and interesting person sitting next to me, uh, Dele. Dele Ogun, right? Yes, Dele Ogun. Dele Ogun. Um, he's a lawyer, a lawyer, author, author, uh, politician, uh, unpaid. Unpaid politician. Yeah. Okay, okay. <clears throat> that counts. That still counts. <laughs> um, speaker. Yep. And you wrote a book. Yeah, I wrote a book. It's titled "A Fatherless People: The a Secret fatherless, Story." A fatherless people, and we're definitely going now to talk about this book. But more important, I invited him today to tell us a little bit about um, how things are going, why they're going the way they're going in Nigeria and hopefully other West African countries. Indeed, yeah, sure. To um, get some more insights into, you know habits, the culture, um, economy and so on. So you've been practicing um, in London yeah, and L Lagos as a lawyer, right? Indeed, indeed. I've been practicing in London for the last uh, 30 years. Yeah. I was called to the English Bar in 1985 yeah. okay. and I was called to the Nigerian Bar in 1986. So wow. I, I've been dealing with legal issues yeah. all this while. So if there is anyone who can tell us more about Nigeria and the people here, that's the man. I'm the man. Stay tuned. All right. <laughs> Let me put this here. Uh, a fatherless people. Why a fatherless people? That's a question everybody asks me. <laughs> uh, uh, intriguing title. Uh, are Niger, is Nigeria truly uh, uh, fatherless? Uh, I always reassure them that there's a difference between having a biological father yeah. and a political father. True. Biological fathers will make the sacrifices in the interests of their children, their yeah. development, their future, helping them to realize their potential. And when we look at the political scene in Nigeria, we ask ourselves, can we really say uh, that we've had leaders uh, who are looking to the long-term interest, not even of the present generation, but the next generation, mm -hmm. the ones who are coming through. And the answer then Nigerians share with me mm. is that no, mm. uh, we haven't. It is, uh, we are uh, politically uh, fatherless. So the book is really a story about an explanation of Nigeria's lost potential mm -hmm. in terms of uh, their educational capability. Yeah. So much that's been untapped, uh, unrealized and undeveloped, yeah. lying fallow. Similarly, the natural resources that everybody speaks of. I mean, I speak a lot about the potential in Nigeria, of course, more related to the startup ecosystem, um, but especially what I see is great. The thing is what we I think need to understand, and this is basically, I guess, what you try to explain also in the book. Um, why are things not better? Why is Nigeria not, not this big country mm. that it might be or it could be? Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, it's tied to, the subtitle is uh, How the Nigerians Miss the Road to yeah. the Promised Land. Yeah. The Promised Land, people ask me, where's the Promised Land? The Promised Land is a Nigeria that's fully uh, firing on all cylinders, yeah. where all the potential that people speak of and that people recognize is really now being turned to performance. Yeah. When we speak about the Miss Road, how the Nigerians Miss Road, you then got to trace the journey back to the beginning yeah. and identify the turning points at which we took the wrong turn in and had we taken a different turn mm -hmm. in, then we would have had Nigerians in the promised land. Yeah. Uh, and, and this is basically what you researched for a couple of years, right? If, uh, I, if I got that right? Oh, no, not a couple of years, this, I mean, a couple of decades. Uh, this, was, this was the work of 20 years of research. I wanted to get to the answer. Yeah. And so 20 years of research, five years of writing. Wow. Uh, so the story starts uh, around the American War of Independence, yeah. 1776. People say, oh, what's the American War of Independence got yeah. to do with Nigeria? It's got lots. I'm not going to spoil the story for those <laughs> who are going to read it. Uh, 1776, and then we take it all the way through to the formal, uh, the process by which the British signed what were called treaties of protection yeah. with the ethnic groups out of which Nigeria was constructed. Yeah. And when you used to ask Nigerians, uh, how many ethnic groups are there in yeah. Nigeria? The answer used to be, before this book, yeah. used to be 
200, 250, which really is the, goes to the heart of the problem in Niger. We don't know our population numbers. Yeah. We don't know the number of ethnic groups. Now, this book discloses that the uh, number is actually 371. I should perhaps take the word actually out because uh, I was told that uh, Reverend Matthew Cooker, who's yeah. one of the leading um, clerical figures yeah. uh, in this country, uh, read the book, looked through the list of 371, and said he couldn't He's find there. his group yeah. in there. Yeah. So the answer is 371 and counting. And, counting. and then in 1914, you have the amalgamation of the two mm -hmm. Nigerias mm -hmm. to make one Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So you often hear Nigerian politicians mm -hmm. talk about one Nigeria, one yeah, Nigeria, yeah. that's what they mean. Okay. It's that process of the fusion yeah, of the two into one. And then through uh, the independence process to the War of Biafra, the Biafran yeah. War, the, the, the struggle now taking a physical form where those from the South, particularly the Igbos, were being slaughtered uh, by compatriots in northern Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The Igbos wants to pull out of yeah. the Federation. Uh, a bit like Brexit now, just mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. have a time, mm -hmm. one deciding to pull out yeah. and the rest of them not wanting them to leave. Yeah, yeah. So we ended up with a war that lasted uh, in the order of uh, a total of three years, mm -hmm. in which close to three million people wow. uh, were lost. Thereafter, uh, we were now in our military <clears throat> regime. When was that? This was, it started uh, with the first coup was 1966. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a military regime up until 1979. Yeah. Uh, and then that didn't last very long. It lasted about six years and yeah. in no time at all, another coup, yeah. another military yeah. era. And so it was uh, dictator after dictator coming through. Uh, and then up until 1999, when we've, uh, we've had the current democratic mm -hmm. dispensation. But in that democratic dispensation, uh, most of the period of governance has again been by ex-military rulers yeah. who took their uniforms off yeah. and brought themselves out again as civilian rulers, which brings us right up to date yeah. as far as our current president, uh, uh, Buhari, yeah. uh, a military general. Is he? Yeah. Uh, okay. a, a military general. And so yeah, the democracy that we have right now mm has -hmm. a sort of military yeah. flavor, mm -hmm. if you like, I military see, tinge, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you like. Thank you very much for this brief, but very interesting and important insights into Nigerian history. Mm. Um, so since you've been working in London yep. most of the time, yep. I guess, right, mm -hmm. for, um, for the last years as a lawyer, yep. how do you see things developed in Nigeria, especially from the economical point of view? Where are we now and why are we there? Well, the, the economic um, pattern of development in Niger that I've been observing uh, has um, uh, is no surprise to anyone to say, well, it's all it's all centered on the oil. We all mm -hmm. we've been sat around the oil table. Mm -hmm. uh, every part of the country, mm -hmm. almost every everything cascades from there. Yeah. Uh, so government controls the oil sector, and uh, it's then the trickle down and the flow down which arrests the development of many other sectors. That's mm -hmm. why we talk about the untapped potential. Yeah. The manufacturing base that we had uh, in the early stages after independence has withered away. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a community that's surrounded by rubber, massive rubber plants. Mm -hmm. It used to belong to Michelin, mm -hmm. rubber, mm -hmm. rubber estates, uh, and oil plantation. And the villages in the area yeah. have no light whatsoever. Not Crazy. power cuts, no light whatsoever. Yeah. And they haven't had it for the last five years. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. In these days, there are still areas, and as we said before, Nigeria is a rich country. Mm, is a indeed. rich country. Yes. Yes. Um, so in the midst of all that wealth, in that, you know, that's just a microcosm, yeah. an illustration of the problem. And the human potential that's then wasted education yeah. opportunity. Uh, I'm from the area. Yeah. I, 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 I'm fortunate that I was taken out of the place and I now come back and I'm the one who's the uh, international corporate lawyer yeah, in the yeah. UK. Think of all the potential <laughs> that's left there Absolutely. amongst those people. In the early stages after independence, we did have young 
promising uh, manufacturing capability, mm -hmm. which with the right support yeah. could have been on a higher level. Yeah. Instead, the level we've we've been reduced and reduced ourselves to a pure consumption society, and the pace of that is accelerating. Yeah. So more and more factories are winding down. Mm -hmm. uh, problems of procuring spare parts because again we're not manufacturing screws and screwdrivers and hammers and all the rest of that. Actually, I, everything, everything is, is important. Yeah, everything is important. Yeah. Everything is important. So you have this. Uh, consumption-driven, yeah. consumption-led economy, yeah. which creates opportunities of its own for yeah. others. I yeah. mean, if you're in the entertainment sector, yeah. everybody knows about our music industry, yeah. our film industry. Uh, That's what Nigeria is famous for. This yeah. is what we are famous for. Uh, and so it's all gearing to the service sector, yeah. entertainment, yeah. but the production sector. <clears throat> Uh, the capacity there yeah. is so huge, especially when the market is, is there on the ground anyway. Absolutely. Uh, all you, you need to do is just sort the power situation out and the manufacturing can, can start yeah. kicking off yeah, 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 to, yeah. To, to meet yeah. the, the, the massive yeah. uh, demands that we've, we've demonstrated that we've always had. Now, that, that then dislocates yeah. the society yeah. because young people who are studying subjects like mechanical engineering, etc., etc. there's no outlook for them. Uh, Unemployment rate is quite high. It's we surely don't know the exact number. Again, right? the numbers problem. We don't know the numbers. What, what is it, 25% or even more? Anyone's guess, anyone's guess. And so yeah. what people are forced into yeah. is just survival, uh, survival mode. Yeah. Uh, they will find something to do, but yeah. that disguises yeah. the true level of unemployment. Absolutely. Because these are just survival mechanisms, yeah. uh, default options um, that people are gravitating to. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Real Thank pleasure. you very much for, for, for sharing your insights with us. At the end of the day, it comes to the same thing that is very important for everyone, especially when we are interested in you know going abroad, living yeah. abroad, doing business abroad, yeah. investing in startups, in, in other cultures. Yeah. Um, it is very important for everyone to understand Absolutely. how the culture works, mm. how it is now mm. and what it used to be, mm. uh, why it has changed mm. and this is why we are talking today about all these facts and, mm. and, and uh, the history mm. and um, how, to, how to deal with it, mm. how to, um, yeah, not, not only deal, deal is maybe the, the wrong way, but how to... Um, how to succeed within the environment. Yes. How to manage it. Yes, absolutely. Um, because uh, with understanding, every, solu every problem is solved through understanding. Yes. So whatever an investor perceives as a problem, yeah. <laughs> uh, and they may be perceiving Nigeria yeah. as a problem place, yeah. That problem has a solution, yeah. which is understand it. Yeah. Once you understand it, it's not a problem yeah. any longer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the rewards are there. Those who will help you to achieve those rewards are there. Yeah. You, you only need to get over the, the mental hump yeah. of thinking that problem is beyond solution. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is not a problem mm -hmm. that is beyond solution. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nigeria is a problem that is capable of understanding and once you've got the understanding mm -hmm. the problem is gone mm -hmm. and you can now and your business mm -hmm. your investments can perform with fantastic returns absolutely tremendous absolutely. returns absolutely. But maybe not the word fantastic tremendous but fantastic say if something is sounds too good to be yeah, true yeah, yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah, not yeah, true yeah. tremendous returns yeah. Tremendous on your investment. Absolutely. Far bigger than what can be realized out Absolutely. Else. And let them know that that book is going to be available on Audible. Yeah. Uh, so absolutely. they can download it. Yeah, they don't need yeah, to come yeah. to Nigeria to yeah. get the book. Yeah. They can download it, listen absolutely. to it. Absolutely. I will definitely share um, all the links yep. where you can buy it and download the Audible. Audible, right? Audible, yeah. Um, see you soon again <laughs> in Lagos. Yep.
visit us from time to time. I'll, I'll, I'll come in the home. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. Dele, Real it's pleasure, been Marcus. a pleasure. Thank Cheers. you very much. Love that. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. See you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. See you, see you in Lagos soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Goodbye.